Time for sports, and the theme was Quack to the Future, complete with a DeLorean and a flux capacitor. The Mallards have returned to the Quad Cities. A few hundred fans turned out to lend their support to the new owner, Chris Lencheski, the founder and president of Ski Motorsports, a NASCAR racing organization. Now He hopes to use his skills from Victory Lane to turn around hockey in the Quad Cities. Well, now that spring football practice is over at Iowa, the coaching staff has to evaluate Bettendorf's Colin Sandelman. Well, last year, Sandeman had six receptions from 76 yards and two touchdowns. This year, he should see significant playing time at split end. I went one-on-one -on -one with Colin after practice Saturday and asked him, where's he going to fit in? I'm just trying to fit in wherever the coaches want me, and um, you know, wherever they want me, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever. What have you worked on specifically? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really trying to focus on um, uh, my, my routes and um, trying to be more consistent with my routes and my reads, and um, you know, just catching the ball. That includes uh, fielding a couple of punts as well, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I love catching punts, and um, if, if they got me in their plans for that, you know, that's awesome. And just when the Quad City River Bandits were starting to hit, they got rained out yesterday. They were off tonight before starting a four-game set in Beloit tomorrow. The last time on Quad City Sports Spotlight, I asked catcher Charlie Cutler and second baseman Aaron Luna if this two-day layoff comes at a good time. Personally, I don't think it is. I'd rather save those rainouts for a little bit later in the season, but uh, we'll take them when they come. Aaron? Exactly. I would you know, totally agree with what Charlie said about that. I mean, you know, when you get kind of a hot streak like this going, you kind of want to keep it rolling. But, you know, at the same time, it is, you know, good for some of these guys that are kind of dinged up to get a day, you know, day off and, uh, you know, ready to, go, ready to go Tuesday. And finally, my sources tell me the Alleman uh, High School may hire a new boys basketball coach. School doesn't have any official comment right now, but that could happen soon. So uh, we'll keep you up to date. Stay tuned. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, man. Jason Moose Gessling is your typical high school student athlete. He likes football and wants to be a part of the team. But Jason has Down syndrome, and he never really gets to play. But on the last day of the season, he not only got the dress for the game, he was a game captain. And before the game officially started, with his mom, and dad, and grandparents, and twin brother Jeremy looking on, he got his chance to run one play and do something that every player would like to do, and that score a touchdown. How'd you feel when you go to get over that goal line? What'd that feel like? Couldn't get hot. Right there. Jason had just found out the night before that he would take the field, and his dad said Moose could hardly sleep. He was very, very excited. I mean, he talked about it all night last night because he found out for the first time the coach told him at practice that he was going to play tonight and dress out. I mean, he, and he also said he was going to do it for his brother. I mean, he has a twin brother, Jeremy, that is having a lot of medical problems, so he's kind of worried about that, but I think everything will be all right. It was a precious moment, something I'll remember all the time. And I hear he was doing this for his brother, correct? Yes, his brother, twin brother, Jeremy, sitting right here. Um, he's had a lot of medical problems. He's going to be having open heart surgery um, probably within the month. And what does it mean to you to have a player like Jason here in the program? Uh, Jason's a real special asset to us. Uh, this guy has a heart of gold, and he comes out to practice every day, gets the guys fired up, and he really he's all about what football is about, about the team, believing in yourselves. And it was nice to get him a chance to come out here today and score a touchdown. He's a great kid. Uh, he's out at practice every day with us. He gets us fired up, gets us ready to go. He's really inspirational, too. And there's nobody that loves football more than Moose does. He's uh, the best player we have. He always is inspiring us. Also today at Logan Elementary School in Moline, students had a chance to meet a sprint car driver, but she wasn't much older than they were. 15-year-old Holly Despain from Keysburg, Illinois, in her second full year of racing, quickly moving up through various divisions, her goal someday to race on the NASCAR circuit. But how does this student at Westmore Secondary School in Joy balance her career and her time in the classroom? Well, um, I actually keep up on my schoolwork. I've been on the honor roll, so I stay up with it. It's actually not that hard if you do your homework. That's all you got to do is do your homework and you'll be fine. So the message to the kids today is what? To stay in school and to pursue their career in whatever they feel the need to. What's the most difficult part about what you do? Probably when I get in a wreck, keep my temper. That's probably the worst. <laughs> News 8's Mick Wanninghoff tonight. He joins us live at the Lodge in Bettendorf.
Well, Vanessa, I'll tell you what, that movie premiere opened tonight. A great crowd was on hand at Cinema 53 for the baseball movie Sugar that was shot in the Quad Cities. And not only did it have a great crowd, but it had all the trimmings of a big time movie premiere. The directors and cast of the film were in town to share their success with those who live and work in the Quad Cities where the movie was made. The star of the film, Al Hennis Perez Soto, was very accessible to fans as he signed autographs, as were co-directors Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck. We had 800 people come out for free to, to be extras in the stadium a couple of days, and it was so amazing to have that. My dad is from Peoria. I used to come here a lot. Well, not here, but my aunt, my great uh, grandmother had a had a farm in Iowa here. So uh, I'd been here maybe when I was three years old. But I, you know, I used to come back to Peoria a lot when I was a kid. And if you want to add to the hometown feel, right now, Diane Pumphrey joins me. And your house was used in the movie. What was it like having that production company come in and take over for a while? Well, it was quite an experience. Um, it, we really had fun. It was a learning experience for us, and um, we're really excited to have that opportunity. And they used your son's bedroom for one of the big scenes? Yes, they did. They brought in some of their own props and made it into the star's room, and um, it was really interesting to see tonight on the screen. You say it was interesting to see. A little bit surreal, though? Yeah, a little bit surreal, but still a great experience for us. Well, Diane Pumphrey, thanks for taking time, and thanks for letting those people use your house. Yes, certainly. That's the story here at the Lodge, as once again we are live, and we'll come back a little bit later on, Matt and Vanessa, for your total day in sports. Hello and welcome to TPC Deer Run. I'm Mick Mollinghoff, and today the pros arrived as the John Deere Classic is in full swing, and those tour professionals wanted to get in some quality work today and get familiar with their surroundings. And it really makes no difference if you're from Franklin, Kentucky, or Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Every year there are minor adjustments that are made to the course here at TPC Deer Run. Each player has to find his own comfort zone, and that holds true for Zach Johnson. The former Masters champ knows the terrain, and today he enjoyed his walk with Kenny Perry. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it was casual, you know. We had a little game, too. It was a little jabby, but that's the way it's supposed to be. And Kenny Perry, the defending champ, took his swings today with Zach Johnson, and the way they were jawing, it's a wonder he didn't take a poke at the former Masters champion. It was all good-natured kidding, but Perry says the jabs were flying out there. Oh, Zach and I go way back. Uh, he's always trash talking me all the time. It seems like every time he trash talks me, I play good. So he needs to keep on doing it. <laughs> now, don't forget, we'll have interviews with the pros all week long because we are the official station of the John Deere Classic. And tomorrow night, starting at 6.30, our first edition of the 19th hole. Live at TPC Deer Run, I'm Mick Monninghoff, WQAD, Quad Cities News 8. Welcome to Hoop Central. I'm Mick Monaghan alongside Matt Randazzo, and what a big night for high school basketball. That's exactly right, Mick. 1A and 2A regional titles up for grabs for the boys in Illinois. A couple of conference finales in the Western Big Six, but we start tonight with postseason play in Iowa. Absolutely right. Bettendorf hosting Clinton tonight, a sub-state semifinal. Not only did the River Kings have to battle one of the top teams in the state, they had to battle the dog pen. The guy that's supposed to in charge of everything is Craig over here. He sends everyone a text message and tells everyone what to do and everything. And if everyone, anything goes, it goes through him first. Craig, what special stuff you have planned for tonight? Well, if you ever watch the NBA, uh, for every home game, LeBron James uh, does his potter in the air. And uh, when George Dexter gets announced, he's going to give us a signal. And then the student body behind me, we're all going to throw some baby powder in the air, just like LeBron James. And right from the outset, the Bulldogs and Seth Van Dees were looking like LeBron James and the Cavaliers. This spin move on the baseline goes, and it brings the dog pound to its feet. He's a beast down there. He gets Austin and Zelkoff. Best shooter since Steve Kerr open. Sets the man, hands down. <laughs> and when Austin and Zelkoff nails this three-pointer, it brought the chant of, you smell, from the dog pound. It was a little misconstrued, and Chess had to take a timeout. Back to the court, and Brian Bergman hits from outside. Bettendorf held the halftime lead of 33 to 13. So as they went to the locker room to prepare for the second half, so did the dog pen. I mean, I got thrown in the penalty box. I had to serve a couple minutes. Uh, it happens, you know. You cheer. You try to do what you can to help the team win. Apparently, they didn't like a couple chants. What are you going to do? I'm back here. Let's go. Let's take it out. Let's go. The Lumber Kings fans didn't have much to cheer about, but Matt Reynolds does beat the buzzer as the third period comes to a close. Still, Bettendorf led 46 to 25. Drive home safely! 
on to the fourth quarter, and the handwriting on the wall when Big Set Van Deese throws one down. The lead was 50 to 31, and the fans knew what they wanted. Beat the Lancers! The final score tonight, 60 to 34 as Bettendorf beats Clinton, and now they move on to the sub-state game. We just gotta come out every game like it's our last because you know it's tournament time. The regular season records they don't matter you know anymore. So we just gotta play hard every single, every single game where you go home. Uh, everybody contributed. It was a total team effort. Austin played great. He, I think he had over 20 points. He really, really played well. And just everybody really chipped in. Um, we're gonna keep it rolling by coming up, giving uh, support like we did tonight. Uh, maybe not some uh, penalty technicals that we got in the fan section, but we're going to keep it rolling, keep this momentum going, and it was a great win. Time for sports in the first game of the day. So the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Outback Bowl taking on South Carolina. This was the last game for running back Sean Green. He's turning pro, but boy, did he go out in style. Raymond James Stadium full of Hawkeye faithful. Iowa looking for win number nine and six in their last seven games. We heard so much about Green and the Iowa running game, but on the first drive, Ricky Stanzi going through the air often. This one to Brandon Myers on a third down conversion. That might have confused the South Carolina defense. And after Green started running, they were dazed too. Green has it inside the 10-yard line. And then on second and goal, Stanzi to Trey Strauss for a 7-0 lead. Stanzi 13-19 for 147 yards and that touchdown. Then two plays later, defensive back Tyler Sash picking off Steven Garcia and Sash taking the ball to the 18-yard line. And it only took five plays for Green to find pay dirt for his first of three scores on the day, and Iowa had a 14 to nothing lead. Then just two plays later, it's Garcia fumbling the football away as A.J. Eads would recover, and it was gonna be that kind of day for the Gamecocks. They turned it over five times. And here's another one. Bradley Fletcher gonna intercept the pass, and that would lead to Iowa's third score in the first half. How about Ricky Stanzi showing his toughness as he carries the ball down to the one yard line coming up here. Almost broke the plane. And then since he didn't get in, we'll give it to Green. Playing in his final collegiate game, he takes it in for a 21-0 halftime lead. Now the Hawkeyes scored on their first two possessions in the third quarter as Danielle Murray made an 18-yard field goal. And then, yep, Sean Green, his third touchdown of the game and a school record 20th of the season. 31-0 Hawkeyes. Now the Gamecocks scored the final 10 points, but that was it. Iowa wins it 31 to 10. Sean Green ran for 121 yards, making it 13 straight games over 100. He also set a school record of 1,850 yards and told his coach of his decision to turn pro after the game. We were just walking down the hall, you know, and uh, you know he had made up his mind. And uh, you know, I've been around the block once or twice. You know, I mean, young people think about uh, their futures. They think about things that are pertinent to their life. And, such a great team member. He's obviously a very tough, determined player on the field, but he's such a great team member. He thinks so right. Uh, you know, he's going to be extreme, extremely uh, valuable, a great asset to any, any team that's uh, smart enough to take him next year. They'll be, very, you know, they'll, they'll be happy about that one. I pretty much did my damage on the college level. You know, SEC supposed to be one of the toughest, toughest, you know, defenses and stuff like that. So I think I did pretty good today. So I think I'm going to try my attention in the NFL. And what if the coach's friend, Scott Paoli, becomes the GM of the Cleveland Browns? Could Ferentz follow to the NFL? Scott's a great friend of mine, and uh, I think it's a mutual thing. You know, but I, I think it's presumptuous to think anybody knows what he's doing right now. And he and I haven't talked in three weeks. So, I mean, you know, we've both been doing our jobs. And I'll tell you, I've got a great job at all. I've said it many, many times. The people are fantastic, and I just feel very, very fortunate. And for the players, this is one they'll never forget. That feels awesome, man. We worked hard for a month, came down here, and uh, represented the conference well. We played well, and we're happy. we got to win. I got a Christmas present, first play of the game, our first pass of the game, and then started with our guys up front, and they just get the job done every week. This is a great month. We had a great bowl prep, and this day I had a great teammates to share it with. I'd, I'd do it all over again. You know, we improved during that during that month off, and that was something we really took pride in, and uh, we don't really relax during bowl prep here at Iowa, so, you know, it feels great. It feels great to be out here and come out as a winner. So Iowa gets the first win of this bowl season for the Big Ten, but other conference teams in action today as well. When we come back, we'll check out the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, Penn State, and USC, plus other games right here on WQAD News Channel 8. Welcome back. How about those other... Welcome back. High school athletes signed their national letters of intent today. One of the biggest signings took place at Sterling High School. Joseph Bertrand will continue his education and play hoops at the University of...